Chapter 21 Temple's Loving Push I first met Dr. Temple Grandin in Los Angeles at one of her lectures. When John and I had the opportunity to speak to her privately, he immediately regaled her with a laundry list of his accomplishments, from learning language at four to college at 16. Her first question was, are you working? His answer that he worked in the family business didn't impress her. She said, you have to get a job outside the family. I knew what she was getting at right away. Society tends to discount the ability of people who have had an autism diagnosis. Parents coddle their kids and want to protect them from bullying or ridicule. With the best intentions, many parents are ruining their child's chance at an independent life. Temple Grandin's book, The Loving Push, goes into detail about the steps parents should take to encourage independence and the mistakes to avoid. For a parent who may be accustomed to doing everything for their child, letting go can be terrifying. In many ways, it can be much more anxiety-provoking than having a child who is dependent. For the sake of both the parent and the child, it is important to create a habit of self-sufficiency. And the earlier, the better. Teaching a child with limited language to make their bed, clean their room, or do the dishes can be challenging. Gemini's life skills videos take the pain out of the whole process. I know it might sound mundane, but very little in this world compares to the feeling when you walk into the kitchen to see your son loading the dishwasher. About six months after I met Temple the first time, I was asked to present her with a Lifetime Achievement Award in Birmingham, Alabama. I told the story on stage about her admonition to John and followed with John's reaction. He went straight home after meeting Temple and got on Craigslist. He walked downtown and asked around at the local retail shop. Within a couple of days, he had an offer of employment at a small grocery store. I have to say, when I heard about his responsibilities, I was a bit concerned. I know autistic PhDs who work in labs and universities who would have more difficulty doing John's new job than their own. He was responsible for, well, everything. It is a small independent store without departments. John had to learn to stock the floor, work behind the deli counter, take food orders over the phone, deliver food on his bike, work the cash register, refill the coffee when needed, and keep the store clean. This transitioning from one task to another is something that is tough for most autistic people. Not for John. He moved from one thing to another with ease, and now he even trains new employees. What can I say? Temple was right. This experience transformed John in ways that I can't even begin to list. He is now independent in just about every way.